everyone, this is Science Lay, and today we'll be talking about the biochemistry of neurotransmitters. Before we go into that, please like this video, share to friends, drop your comments. I would like to really see your comments. Subscribe to my channel to get notified of every video I drop. Now let's go to today's work. Now, what's the content? What are neurotransmitters? General features of neurotransmitters, structures, synthesis, storage, and degradation of catecholamines, serotonin histamine and acetylcholine neurotransmitters also called chemical messengers now these are chemical agents released by neurons to stimulate neighboring neurons or muscles or gland cells now this permit to allow impulse to pass from one cell to the other this is the mechanism of communication in the nervous system now molecules that serve as neurotransmitters are in two basic structural categories based on structure we have small nitrogen containing molecules and neuro peptides now on that small nitrogen containing molecules these molecules contain nitrogen and if you look at glutamate you see the amino group amino has nitrogen in GABA glycine which is an amino group acetylcholine dopamine noepinephrine serotonin histamine if you draw these molecules you surely see nitrogen so that's that's why they are called small nitrogen containing molecules the other ones are neuro peptides they are mostly found in the cns they are synthesized in the cns Usually, the hormones of the pituitary gland, such as growth hormone, thyroid stimulating hormone, also endorphins. These are neuropeptides. Neuronal tracts are often identified. What are neuronal tracts? Tracts are a collection of nerve axons. Maybe I'll drop a video on anatomy of the nervous system also. Neuronal tracts are identified by their neurotransmitter. For example, dopaminergic tract synthesizes and releases the neurotransmitter dopamine. Why is it called a dopaminergic tract? Because that collection of nerve, nerve axons they synthesize and they release dopamine. Now, general features of neurotransmitters synthesis from amino acids and common metabolic precursors usually occurs in the cytoplasm of the presynaptic nerve terminal. You know, we learned about essential and non essential. Watch my video on amino acids. The non essential can be synthesized by the body. So the amino acids required for the production of the neurotransmitters are done in the cytoplasm of the presynaptic nerve terminal. While the next one says synthesis of neurotransmitters is regulated to correspond to the rate of firing. According to the level of stimulus, we determine if that neurotransmitter should be produced in large quantity or in a lesser quantity. Neurotransmitter is actively taken up into storage vesicles in the presynaptic terminal. They are stored until when they are utilized, needed for action. Neurotransmitter acts at a receptor on the postsynaptic membrane. Now, this is very obvious. Nothing works in the body without acting on a receptor. Hormones will bind to form hormone receptor complex. Neurotransmitter will also pass to the same pathway. It will act on the receptor on the postsynaptic terminal to cause changes that will, that will lead to the action potential. Now, all these general features listed there are not exhibited by all the neurotransmitters. For example, nitric oxide. Now, catecholamines are derived from tyroxine, serotonin synthesized from tryptophan, acetylcholine synthesized from choline, which can be supplied from diet or is synthesized or and stored as part of phosphatidylcholine, glutamate and its neurotransmitter derivative, gamma aminobutyric acid, which is GABA, are derived from alpha ketogit glutarate in TCA cycle, TCA tricarboxylic acid, glycine is synthesized in the brain from serine. So let's now go in detail into their synthesis, their storage, their catabolism. I'll talk on a common neurotransmitter, acetylcholine. Now acetylcholine is usually secreted from parasympathetic neuronal fibers. Now synthesis is synthesized from acetylcholine A and choline. And the reaction is catalyzed by the enzyme choline acetyltransferase. Now where can we get choline from? Choline can be imported from blood, from hydrolysis of phosphatidylcholine in membrane lipids, and hydrolysis of sphingomyelin in membrane lipids. Now, look at the structure. You can see acetyl-CoA. Acetyl usually refers to two carbon. You can see the CH3 bonded to a carbon that is bonded to double bond O, bonded to the CoA group, added to choline, which has a nitrogen bonded to three methyl group. There's a removal of CoA. Can see the enzyme is choline acetyl transferase, it forms acetylcholine. You, you can see the bonding of the acetyl CoA to the choline. There's removal of the S CoA group and the OH group. 
Now, I said I could a colon can rather be degraded or split into acetate and choline. You can see it in the, with the name of the enzyme acetylcholine esterase and there's the removal of water. Now choline requires three SAM. SAM is S adenosyl methionine because of the three methyl groups that are there. It is also believed that vitamin B12 requirement is required for choline synthesis and contributes to the neurological symptoms of vitamin B12 deficiency. The acetyl group used for acetylcholine synthesis is derived primarily from glucose oxidation to pyruvate and the carboxylation of pyruvate to form acetyl-CoA via pyruvate dehydrogenate reaction. Acetylcholine is inactivated by acetylcholine exterase. The next neurotransmitter we'll be talking about is catecholamines. Now, under catecholamines, we have dopamine, no epinephrine, and epinephrine. And they are synthesized in a common pathway from the amino acid tyrosine. Please watch my video on amino acid to understand how tyrosine is synthesized from phenylalanine. And the enzyme that catalyzes the reaction is phenylalanine hydroxylase. So now the first and rate limiting step in the synthesis of these neurotransmitters from tyrosine is the hydroxylation of the tyrosine ring by tyrosine hydroxylase, a tetrahydrobiopterin requiring enzyme. The tyrosine hydroxylase requires BH4, which is tetrahydrobiopterin. The product form is L-dopa. Dopa means dihydroxyphenylalanine. You know that the difference between phenylalanine and tyroxine is OH. Now, when you add another adjacent OH to it, it becomes dihydroxy. There's two OH, phenylalanine, and that is dopa. Now, the phenyl ring with adjacent OH group is called a catechol. Catecholamines. All the catecholamines contain a catechol group. What's a phenyl ring? Phenyl ring is a benzene ring that's a substituent. When you have a benzene ring attached to something, it's called phenyl. So when a, a phenyl ring has adjacent OH group, it's called catechol. Catechola means because they, are, they have a catechol group attached to a carbon chain that has an amine group. So they are called catechola means. So that's why it um, synthesizes dopa. Now the second step of catechola means synthesis is the decarboxylation of dopa to form dopamine. Decarboxylation, removal of CO2. This reaction like many decarboxylation reactions of amino acids, require pyridoxal phosphate, PLP. Dopaminergic neurons stop the synthesis at this point because these neurons do not synthesize the enzymes required for the subsequent steps. Now, the difference between dopa and dopamine is removal of CO2. You can see very clearly the structure, your dopa, your dopamine, just remove the CO2 which is COO minus in this case. Now, neurons that secrete no epinephrine synthesize it from dopamine in an hydroxylation reaction catalyzed by dopamine beta hydroxylase. Now, the difference between dopamine and no epinephrine is hydroxylation of the first carbon here outside the catechol group. Add OH to that carbon and you have gotten no epinephrine, as simple as it is. Now, the enzyme requires vitamin C and copper is a cofactor to the enzyme. It helps the ability, it helps the enzyme to perform better. Now, the next one is epinephrine. Now, the difference between epinephrine and epinephrine, can you look at it and see the difference? Okay, now look at the structure. Epinephrine gave away some hydrogen to be bonded with methyl. So a methyl group is transferred from some s adenosine methionine to one of the nitrogen there, to, to the nitrogen there to form epinephrine. So the difference between epinephrine and epinephrine is a methyl group. So you can see it drawn there very beautifully. So that's basically how catecholamines are synthesized from phenylalanine to tyroxine. The enzyme is phenylalanine hydroxylase from tyroxine to dopa. The enzyme is tyroxine hydroxylase, which is also a copper dependent tyroxine hydroxylase that leads to the formation of melanin, which is for skin color from dopa to dopamine, dopa decarboxylase, which removes this, which removes CO2 to form dopamine, while dopamine beta hydroxylase add OH group to dopamine on the first carbon to form noepinephrine. Noepinephrine 
is a transfer of methyl and the enzyme is phenyl ethanolamine and methyl transferase to form epinephrine so that's that on catecholamines let's talk on their storage now or their transportation catecholamines are transported into vesicles by the protein vmat2 which is vesicle monoamine transporter 2 in the vesicles the catecholamines exist in a complex with atp and acidic proteins known as chromogranase so in vesicles they are in a complex with atp and acidic proteins the actions of catecholamines are terminated through the uptake into the presynaptic terminal and diffusion away from the synapse that how are the actions terminated you know catecholamines they cause sympathetic response if the body does not terminate it the body will continually remain in sympathetic response so the uptake back into the vesicle or when they diffuse away from the synapse synapse is the meeting point between two neurons two of the major reactions in the process of inactivation and degradation of catecholamines are catalyzed by monoamine oxidase mao and catechol o methyltransferase comt so these are the ways the body deal with catecholamines now the next one we'll talk about is serotonin serotonin is another important neurotransmitter the first enzyme of the pathway is tryptophan hydroxylase it uses an enzymatic mechanism similar to tyroxine hydroxylase and requires bh4 which is tetrahydrobiopterin to hydroxylate the ring structure of tryptophan so tryptophan there will be an hydroxylation of the ring structure of tryptophan to form 5-hydroxy tryptophan 5-ht right yeah look at your tryptophan structure there will be an addition of OH which to hydroxylate the ring to form 5-hydroxy tryptophan. You can see your tetrahydrobiopterin reduced to dihydrobiopterin. You can see the oxygen converted to water. Now the second one is the, the second enzyme is dopa decarboxylase which removes CO2 from 5-hydroxy tryptophan to produce serotonin and there is a cofactor needed which is pyridoxal phosphate now dopal sorry serotonin like catecholamines neurotransmitters can be activated by monoamine oxidase now let's talk on histamine histamine that causes allergic inflammatory response within the brain histamine is produced both by mast cells and certain neuronal fibers it is synthesized from histidine in a single enzymatic step the enzyme is histidine decarboxylase and requires PLP, pyridoxal phosphate, and its mechanism is very similar to that of dopa decarboxylase. So your histidine structure removes CO2. Enter here the word decarboxylase, remove CO2, and that's it. You form histamine. So on, on my website, I'll drop the functions to these neurotransmitters. So that's basically what I'll be talking on this video on neurotransmitter. Stay tuned, like this video, subscribe, drop your comments, and don't forget to share to friends and subscribe to my channel to get notified of my new and latest videos. Thank you very much. See you next week.